ever been a victim of an asthma attack. And we told you to tweet at K24TV. It's time to take a look at your feedback right now. I'll start with Twitter. And this is what you're saying. Chris underscore Ray 15. You say, I've been a victim for 20 years now. No full cure is available, but management methods can help a person with asthma lead full and active life. That's on Twitter. Let me check on Facebook. And this is your feedback on Facebook. John Mushiri, you say, Diagnosed with asthma uh, in the year 2002 after severe coughs and breathing difficulties, which could come after experiencing some climate change, dust, smoke, cigarette smoke. But with good medical advice, I'm able to survive. This is your feedback on Twitter and Facebook. Time now to engage the doctor and Karen will do that for us. Karen, over to you. Thank you so much, Eric Njoka. I do have a pulmonologist in studio tonight. His name is Dr. Juma Abuika from Aga Khan. Juma, thank you so much for being here tonight. Just uh, out of curiosity for some viewers who don't understand what a pulmonologist does, what exactly do you do? Okay, a pulmonologist is another name for a chest physician, a, a respiratory physician, or a thoracic physician. Uh, in essence, we are specialized in managing breathing problems or breathing difficulties. And the scope of what we do is quite uh, extensive. So in simple terms, Dr. Ari, what is asthma? So asthma is a condition uh, which affects the airways inside the lungs and results in people having breathlessness, chest tightness, congestion of the, t of the chest, and, uh, and wheezing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes and goes as opposed to being permanent and progressive and uh, it responds to triggers, uh, hence uh, they talk about triggers and it brings the asthma on. Mm -hmm. Do we have different types of asthma? Yes, uh, to be frank, the types are more for the scientific audience or specialized uh, physicians, uh, but in short, there, there, there is the asthma caused by allergy, so you could call that allergic asthma, and this comes along with things like uh, hay fever, allergic rhinitis, allergic conjunctivitis, uh, and the rest of it. And then you have the non-allergic types. Uh, some of them are adult onset asthma, so it affects people when they are grown up, uh, more so in women, and it can come even uh, after, after menopause, mm -hmm. more uh, in obese people. Uh, you have uh, what we call eos eosinophilic asthma. Uh, eosinophils are a type of white cells, and uh, people who have asthma with raised eosinophils, can, uh, can, this can be detected in the sputum as well. Uh, and uh, it's important because they are more responsive to steroid treatment than the other types of asthma, uh, and so forth and so forth. There are quite a number. They are differentiated amongst uh, special uh, blood test results that we do and uh, the age of onset and what is causing the disease. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the early warning signs? Right, the, the, the early warning signs are primarily the symptoms. So this will be a wheeze, uh, a cough, uh, breathlessness or tightness uh, in breathing. Uh, and this will be symptoms that happen when people are exposed to specific scenarios. Uh, and the, the, the key thing to remember is that in children, not everybody who wheezes has asthma. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, Dr. Tari, um, I want to understand also the interrelation between asthma, allergies, and eczema. Right. So this brings us to the question you asked earlier about the types of asthma. So uh, there are people who have allergies. That means their bodies have a heightened and perhaps unnecessary response to exposure to certain things which we'll call triggers. Uh, and this may result in them having hives or different uh, rashes, uh, have uh, painful red eyes or itchy blocked runny nose. Uh, in the same way that these conditions uh, happen, they may have an effect in the airways of their lungs and this results in, in asthma. So uh, the mechanism that causes allergy is the same mechanism that can cause asthma in allergic asthma. And for so many parents out there who have kids, of course, they need to look out for some of the symptoms that children usually get when having um, asthma. So what are some of the symptoms you can look out for when you have a child? Okay, so it will be a cough, 
children may just cry and cough a lot. Uh, they may make, uh, make a wheeze, which is a whistling noise that comes from the chest uh, during breathing. Um, and they, uh, they could actually, it, it can be quite severe to the extent of uh, the children getting a, a blue discoloration of the mucosa or the, the membranes in the mouth and even getting unconscious. Uh, I think the key symptoms are a cough and wheezing that tend to happen uh, in certain times, say night or early in the morning more than others, on exposure to cold or on exposure to smoke. Uh, to, and to other things like uh, strong perfumes, smells, uh, flowers, and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do children outgrow asthma? Right, that's the million dollar question, isn't <laughs> it? So the, 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 the thing about it is that uh, quite a lot of children wheeze when they are, uh, when they are young. And, uh, and that, when you mean young, what, what, what age gap so exactly? So, uh, you know, five years on, onwards, okay. uh, even below five. Uh, lots of children wheeze. Uh, and there are lots of other reasons why they do wheeze. Uh, and not all of them go on and develop asthma. And it's quite difficult at that tender age to differentiate asthma from other non-asthmatic uh, causes for wheeze. So it's quite common to hear in my clinic, for instance, people coming and say, I had, uh, I had asthma, I, out, I out, outgrew it. But uh, they probably didn't have it. Um, some people do have asthma that is not very well managed. and. Uh, uh, they eventually manifest with the full-blown disease later on in adulthood. But when you take a good history, you realize that they did have problems with cough and noisy breathing when they were younger. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, amongst adolescents, about three-quarters of people who wheeze will develop asthma. So uh, wheeze in adolescence is perhaps more predictive of asthma than in younger children. Mm -hmm. yes. And also, can a person with mild asthma get a severe asthma attack? Yes, uh, and that is a very important message that I want to get across here. Uh, there is quite a lot of evidence over time uh, that one in three people who have severe asthma, and uh, I'll describe what I mean by that, this is asthma that is bad enough to get somebody admitted into hospital, or bad enough to get somebody admitted into the intensive care unit, or bad enough to take someone's life. So up to one in three people who have this type of uh, uh, severe asthma in the preceding three months had what we would call mild asthma, uh, just walking in the streets, not really needing or using their inhalers, and feeling very healthy. Mm -hmm. And out of, the, out of the blues, bang, they got a severe attack and ended up in a very critical situation. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the unexpected asthma triggers. Yes. Yeah, for example, can pets be a trigger? Yes, actually pets are uh, very clearly documented as being some triggers, uh, as, as be, being triggers. So, uh, uh, triggers are quite unique to, to different people. So you, you'd imagine you may react to a pet and I might not. And we both may be asthmatics having allergic, uh, allergic asthma. So it's quite important to find what the triggers are for every allergic asthmatic. Uh, but in pets, uh, for instance, uh, cats, uh, and dogs is danda, that is uh, an allergen, meaning it triggers asthmatic reactions in, a, in, a, in susceptible patients. Mm -hmm. yes. And the final question, Dr. Tari, uh, what are the treatment advance, uh, advancements that have been uh, made in terms of managing the condition? Okay, there, there's quite a lot of high-powered, very elaborate uh, drugs that have been uh, developed to fight severe asthma. Uh, how well they work, uh, where they, uh, they are used it is still not very clear. Uh, and uh, perhaps the most important uh, thing that is message that is coming from the scientific community in asthma research is that some of the drugs which have been present with us for 60 years or longer, which are perhaps if I asked you what is the most commonly used drug to treat asthma, you would give me a name of, uh, say, salbitamol inhaler. Uh, the research is showing that in actual fact, if if used on its own without using uh, together with a certain drug, it can actually be harmful to, to asthma. So okay. this is perhaps the most important message coming out of the of their scientific research uh, okay. uh, to do with asthma. Okay, thank you yes. so much, Dr. Juma Abweka. He's a pulmonologist at the Aga Khan Hospital. And of course, on Have Your Say, we're asking, have you ever been a victim of asthma? Our Twitter handle is at K24TV. Let's take a short break.